familiar where the mute button is, which is kind of down at the bottom of the screen on the left. And when you're not talking, go ahead and mute. And then we'll make fun of you when you try to say something and you're muted and we'll call you out on it. Uh, but if we can get used to kind of muting, it will just help uh, everybody, I think. And we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, I think everybody got minutes uh, with Jessica's email. Um, does anybody, uh, I don't know that we actually have to vote and approve those or anything like that, but anybody see anything we left out or anything that was uh, dramatically wrong? Well, then we're going to go with those uh, and it'll be good. And um, we'll kind of move forward in the meeting. Um, we've got a lot to do today. Um, and uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about homework assignments. If you remember, um, we said uh, do two things uh, between these two meetings, and that is spend a little time looking at the different plans that uh, the city made available to us. Um, and I, I actually uh, I actually got some community input here, a long handwritten letter that's really good that I was going to pass out to all y'all. Um, it's from Milton Moore. He kind of reviewed uh, John, the 1974 plan and uh, had some input. And I'll just bring that the next time we're all physically together. Um, and you're also asked to exit the interstate over the holidays, at least one place and uh, drive into a town and see what you saw. So let's start uh, with the driving tours first. And um, I'm gonna hopefully get somebody to volunteer. And if not, I'm gonna start calling on people. And, uh, but uh, who would like to tell us something they've seen when they visited a small town? Hey, Miles. Yes. Uh, Greg Williams on phone call. Just wanna remind everyone we are being recorded. Good reminder. Thank you. And I'm glad you got in at least via the phone. So Brandy, you want to tell us about visiting a town? Sure. Um, I didn't go really far, but over um, the holidays, we actually went to Kilgore downtown and to Marshall downtown. Um, Marshall has ice skating <laughs> in December. Um, and so that was a, a thing my son wanted to do. So we went up to Marshall and walk, walked around downtown there. Um, some lots of things I noticed uh, about both towns that we visited um, was that they had pretty wide sidewalks. Most of them had ramps that were easily accessible, um, and uh, they they definitely are newer <laughs> than Nacogdoches because we are the oldest town in Texas because they're they're their streets were so much wider than ours. I was like, man, like that difference is, it's a big difference. Um, but uh, several of them had a lot of tables that you could sit at outside. Um, and of course I walked around our downtown too, to try to see what the difference was right after I did that. So um, cool. yeah, it was, it was nice to see there were um, in Kilgore, there were a lot of businesses that were closed or that were because we went right after Christmas. Um, and of course, there were several that were just closed that week. But a lot of them were also places that I wouldn't normally go in. And it was kind of like, oh, another one that it doesn't apply to like a visitor, like a lawyer's office or, you know, things like that, that weren't tourist type places. Um, so yeah, I tended to notice that more when I was visiting a city as opposed to, you know, because I know we have those downtown too, but being a visitor, I recognized that, oh, well, this isn't for me at all. So that was just something I, interesting I thought I noticed. So. Good deal. Well, thanks for going first. Appreciate that. Uh, who else would like to tell us something they saw? Anybody? You can raise your hand electronically or if you're yeah, on screen. Hand. You can raise your hand and I'll just call on you. Yeah, Miles, Shay has her hand up. So Shay, you want to go ahead? Got it. Um, can y'all hear me? I've had some trouble. Okay, good. Um, I would, um, I would, we went to Jacksonville on the way to Tyler. And um, one thing that I noticed in downtown Jacksonville, they have, um, they took what would, would have been like a pocket park. I guess they had a building demo on their main street and um, they've made it into a food truck parking um, 
a food truck parking place and it's it's landscaped really cool and they have a permanent like pergola with um tables that are shaded and lights in the evenings so it's a um really inviting um pocket park slash food truck destination in the middle of their downtown perfect good stuff perky Yes, um, we went to Hot Springs over the break, and while it's uh, a bigger city, uh, you know, nationally, the historic, the very historic downtown part is, of course, smaller than Nacogdoches. Um, so it was very interesting to see what they were dealing with, um, very limited parking due to the geography. Um, you, when you're in between two cliffs, there's only so many places, so they had some very good um, multi-story parking uh, a block off of the historic main street um, and and that addressed what was clearly a major issue um, a lot of renovation and different projects going on but um, we really appreciated a lot of benches and places for people to sit um, interspersed of course throughout that historic downtown which is all also a national park on top of it very good uh, Ann, you got to give us something since you zigzagged sure. the country and then went to well, the part of the yeah, country. I, I drove, actually, I, well, I drove through central Texas um, on my way out to California, just looking at little towns. A lot of the downtowns are very similar to ours, with the exception that there's a courthouse in the middle instead of a visitor center. But it's a, a street or two with some lures offices, a restaurant or two, you know, a few places where there's cars and this was after the holiday, so there wasn't a lot going on. Um, the only exception, of course, was Fredericksburg, which is actually like it was so busy and had it was almost like a, a theme park more than a downtown. It was such a, you know, solely a tourist area only rather than a downtown. But you know what I was, what I was kind of looking for, and I never saw it really anywhere, was a downtown that seemed like it was a place that community members went for things on a regular basis. I was, you know, anyway, I was trying to think of the old, um, uh, the way downtown used to be before the shopping malls and things, when people would go down there and go to the hardware store, go to the drug store. But I don't know. I don't know how to, I haven't seen that anywhere. And that may not be something that even exists anymore. Downtown, that's a, a destination for people to just in part of their daily lives. The only thing, other thing I wanted to, said that I saw it was I went to Lufkin uh, before Christmas to go see the Celtic Angels at the Pines Theater, which is right downtown. And when I got out, you know, it was right before Christmas. So there was light, but they have lights up all the time, pretty colored lights, but there were families walking around and they were going to visit the Rudolph and they're going off for some hot cocoa. And it wasn't so much just one street. Lufkin downtown seems to have several blocks that, are all part of downtown that people were walking around. It just seemed a little more alive for being, you know, eight o'clock in the evening. Yeah. So anyway, that's all. That's, those are all my observations at the moment. Well, Thanks. as, um, as you, as you learned a while ago when we were just chattering, I, I did actually go to Crystal Beach. And to be honest, I know that everybody in East Texas has beach houses at Bolivar and goes down there all the time. I probably have not been to Bolivar in 35 years except by boat on the intercoastal waterway. And um, the one thing I noticed about uh, the destination of Crystal Beach is it's all spread out. There's, there is no center point other than the quote unquote big store, but you know, you got to drive through four or five miles down here to this restaurant, or you got to go over here. And um, I thought I found myself thinking what an advantage that we have, uh, not just with main street, but the fact that we have, you know, some historical buildings with within walking distance from our main street uh, where you have uh, some venues kind of on those perimeters. You know, if you go down to the railroad museum or Antipastas or, you know, Bonita Creek or any of that, uh, even the gardens by the master gardener up, up near University Drive. Um, I think we, uh, you know, I kind of took away we, we're kind of fortunate that we have a pretty neat concentrated area that complements all of Nacogdoches. But, you know, somebody, if there was parking available, somebody could park and you could spend all day walking around and seeing things. I mean, especially if you picked up the Atlanta Creek Trail and 
you know, you've kind of got a mixture of everything from outdoorsy stuff to indoorsy stuff, uh, restaurants, pubs, you name it, all technically within walking distance. And I know in Texas, you know, people would think you need to drive from the bank to Clear Springs, but really that's, that's kind of, you know, you know, potentially something that you could traverse, you know, um, and, and so that's kind of neat. That was my takeaway. Anybody got anything else they want to share? Laura, you got something? Yeah. Um, I visited Natchitoches. I've talked about this before when I was on the Main Street Committee, but one thing that was kind of neat, and part of it is because uh, there's kind of one main road that goes into the historic district. Um, they have a big, huge overhead sign that kind of lets you know that you are now entering uh, historic Natchitoches. And uh, I know we've talked about possibilities of how we could do that here. It makes it a little more complicated that we have multiple streets. Um, and, you know, there's, I guess, some debate where does our downtown stop and start and how many of these signs would we need? You know, kind of something similar to what we did at Millard's Crossing, you know, that big, huge yeah. sign. Um, that may be something to consider when people are coming in from South Street or North Street uh, or even Main, you know, different parts of Main Street. Do we have four of those? I know those are not cheap, but um, somehow to kind of visually define where the downtown boundaries are. Well, one thing that's also really nice about Natchitoches, of course, is it's right on the river and I don't know, I've heard for years of talk of a river walk. Um, I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but that would certainly be cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we've got a, some potential down in the Festival Park area to do some different things. Um, and I agree with Miles. He's, you know, the fact that we have such a condensed area that it's not that intimidating to walk. Um, but if we could expand that some to the um, train station and, of course, like you said, Clear Springs, Antipost is that area kind of nice to at least have it in people's mind that that's all part of the downtown. Cool. Good job. Well, that's fun. Um, I made a list of things. I hope you did, too. Everything from... Uh, entry signage, sidewalks, outdoor seating areas, a uh, mixture of business and commercial, food truck permanent places, parking issues, um, you know, um, uh, family friendly, um, uh, several blocks, not just one. So, you know, as we move forward with this, we, we really all need to develop the habit of looking at every town we visit. And seeing what we have uh, that they don't have or what they have that we don't have. And, you know, obviously there's some parameters and money always counts and things like that. But um, I, I think probably we're, we're sitting in a pretty good spot. And I think the more we look at other towns, uh, we'll start to recognize things that we might want to make sure that ends up in our plan at the end. So though that was kind of the first homework assignment, uh, it's a permanent homework assignment. And, uh, and it's okay with me if in a month or two or three, you call me on it and say, Hey, we need to go around the circle again and, and add to that list. And so uh, thank you all for doing that. Um, now we're going to check assignment number two. Uh, and that is you were going to take a look at the plans that were made available to us. Um, and you were going to see if something jumped out at you. Um, you know, the, the letter I want to share with you uh, from uh, the community member Milton, um, you know, he said basically he he really studied that uh, uh, 1974 downtown master plan, and he said had a good observation. He said we we've, we've really only done about 20 percent of that, and uh, you know you could almost pick that up and continue on with it. And, and his point was, so why do we even need a consultant or anything like that? Let's just gussy that one up and go forward with it. 
Um, and I appreciate that. That's good input, um, uh, you know, from him. And I'm glad that as a community member, he spent the time looking at that plan. And I had told John uh, the last meeting when I looked at that plan and I looked at how you really think about it in 1974, think how far out there that plan was because it, it was, you know, very visionary uh, for the time. And I think that's something that uh, I took away from looking at the plans that um, we, we need to see what's available that we can build on, but we also need to have the courage to say, we're going to go way out there and, and we're going to, we're going to maybe put some things down on paper that people look at us like we've lost our mind. And I'll tell you, um, I know John's the only one that, um, you know, he was 10 years old and involved in that first uh, plan, but uh, I will tell you, uh, that's not uncommon. The fact that we've only maybe done about 20% of it, that's 20% more than was done without it. And, and we need to understand that, that we're not going to give the city a plan and they're going to implement everything about it exactly like we said. And they'll put a statue up of us sitting around talking about it. It's not going to happen. Um, but if you get 20% of a really good plan to happen, you've done some good for the community. So um, I, I went first. That's my observation. When I studied the plans, who would like to share something else with us? Uh, you can wave or electronically wave, raise your hand. John Anderson. Am I, is my microphone on? Great. Um, thank you. When I was 10 at that time, <laughs> uh, I thought there was a tremendous amount of future ahead of us. So I was very, I was delighted with the sort of far reaching ideas of that plan. Um, one of the things that that plan suggested is a coherent downtown, which we luckily, as has been pointed out by several other people do have, we have a main street of a very obvious length and our width is not ungainly. It's not block after block that goes off to each side. So that makes a very natural central thing. And all of the recommendations for parking that were in that 74 um, proposal are still there and still need to be done. So that's one way of incorporating it in what we're doing now. Another thing I'd like to add, using the subject of coherency, is the idea of utilizing the 1846 city limits boundary line. And the city has lots and lots of good maps and stuff on that worked out, which lets that one square mile it was done for the simplicity of the thing. Um, it also, by the way, is what allows Nacogdoches to state itself as being the first city in Texas, because even San Antonio did not define city limits in the same way until 1847, one year later. So it's a little bit of trivia. Um, what that does, if you superimpose that one square mile block. It's easily definable. It's easily set up and identified with signs. It coincides almost precisely with major intersections looking all four directions uh, with a good location for a gateway definition to the 1846 community. And then within that, the downtown structure of, which is basically a long narrow bunch of buildings uh, that were built there during the period between that and uh, early 1900s. So it's really very easy to use that dual definition. If, you, if, you, if we choose to identify the 1846 city limits, one square mile, it's a perfect square, one mile on each side. It includes um, the Zion Hill community, which has its own master plan already in place. It has been only 
5% developed at this point. It includes the other African American component of the wedge down at the intersection of Shawnee and East Main. It includes most of the historical overlay areas and basically is much more inclusive than the community and expands the idea to the point that it dovetails pretty easily along its perimeter, that being its original line, with the comprehensive study, which is being done separately, but we're not separate from them. We're talking about the middle of it. So I'd like for everyone to give that a thought, and this, we'll ask the city for our next meeting, which we may be able to actually sit and look at each other, um, to have that map available for everyone to look at and give everybody a chance to think about it. It broadens the scope without making it more work for us and uh, anybody else to do. It just simply gives you a really neat, historically accurate way. We even have field notes available on the uh, surveying of that. It is accurate. It's easy to sign off so that you have identification of the perimeter and it creates four natural gateway points. So with that recommendation, I'd like for everybody to give that a thought and also by saying it, I will be asking the city engineering folks since they, they had it already to get that in place where we can look at it on the screen and then on a small scale one to take home with us. Well, I can tell you this from a market standpoint. Um, one square mile is uh, is easy. You know, come visit a historic one square mile and all. I mean, that's that's pretty neat. So good job. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. And okay. How old were you in 1846 when you were on that committee? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, Mario, got his hand up. Mario, unmute for us and go for it. Um, yes, I was um, I was wondering about the demographic information in the plan um, because I'm noticing that um, it seems like there were more industries available back then in 74 and I was born in 74. That was a long time ago. Um, it seemed like family income was more stable and it seems that um, median income seems stable and and I just want to make sure that the next plan that we look at that data and we know who our audience is, who are we building for and who are we supplying services and goods for downtown? Mario, that's good input. And I know there's already been some discussion about, you know, and it's a juggling game that we'll have the responsibility to kind of sift through. But, you know, you have. Um, you got people that want a bunch of tourists to come to town and then they but then you got people that that don't want some place like you know new Brunswick or something where it's all tourists or or even uh um you know hot springs or someplace like that and then and then you have the other end that says you know we just we need to bring people to town but we need some vibrant businesses that don't depend on tourists only they cater to the demographics that live here and so i, I think that's Great input, appreciate that. And I'm making notes and I guarantee you Jessica's making notes or somebody is there. So uh, anybody else, uh, let's see, Brandy and Perky both have their hands raised. So let's start with Brandy. Uh, John, I love the idea of making it, I would love to see that map. Um, Jessica, it looks like she's, she said, we actually have that map and she'll give it, get it to us um, in the comment section. Um, I think it would be really important to get that historical Shawnee Street um, as part of historical downtown. There is a lot of history. There's a lot of, um, there's some books out and some interviews out about uh, historical Shawnee Street. So um, I can try to find those. Um, I have a friend who's been really uh, looking at those lately. So. Um, I was really interested in the Texas Main Street Historical Commission plan, um, which I don't remember when that was from 2017, maybe, um, because I felt like it accurately highlighted some of the difficulties that we have to work with <laughs> currently. It showed a lot of our streets that have 
you know, or uh, sidewalks that have cracks in it, things like that. Um, and it talked about how to improve those. Um, and it gave a lot of questions about um, parking <laughs> and whether to take some of the street parking downtown and change it into like pocket parks or places for people to eat. And a lot of those good ideas that we've been having, um, but it also brought up the question of, do we have enough parking? And when I did um, a post on the PAL page about like uh, our last meeting and what was discussed and ideas that were we had, um, parking came up several times. And so I, I have some specific questions about parking. Um, I know I, I sent an email um, out that had a bunch of my questions in it, but um, I think that because I, I personally don't think that there is a huge parking issue because I think that there are two different parking <laughs> problems we have. One is when we have the Blueberry Fest and we'll never have enough parking for 19,000 people, right? <laughs> so that's a separate separate thing from daily parking things. Um, and every time I visit downtown, I find that parking is is pretty easy. Um, but I, as I started driving around downtown and noticing um, where signs were and things, I realized that this um, plan did say like better signage um, or ev not even better signage, but there are some signs that are confusing <laughs> just where they're placed. Um, specifically there's one downtown by city hall that is really <laughs> difficult because there's a private pro property that says private parking or private property, no parking right in front of a public parking space. Uh, and it's really confusing for me. Yeah. So, um, I felt like we have to identify like the parking issues because we can't start to make plans about putting park pocket parks in or, you know, taking away some of that downtown park street parking. If we don't know what our parking situation actually looks like. So um, I think we have to answer some of those questions before we can even start um, to, to ask, what do we want to do? Good input. Um, thank you. Um, Perky, you got your hand up, and then I think Emmy maybe had hers up. So, Perky. Um, I, uh, two comments. First, on what you um, conveyed about Milton's uh, letter. And, and on the one hand, I agree. If they are good ideas that we feel that they're good ideas, then yes, we should keep working on them. However, much of those were predicated, as Mario was saying, on a lot of outdated facts and figures. Our demographics are changing. Um, and compared to 1974 today, um, we know if, if we have two audiences that we're looking at for downtown, residents and business owners, uh, and then the second group of heritage tourism and tourists, uh, we know a lot more about tourists and how they function today um, as a group than in 1974. So we're, we're really, we, we do live, as Mario said, it is a very different time than 1974. Um, and so making our decisions need to be based on um, current information and a lot of the research that's gone on in the last 50 years. So that even if we simply are addressing the things we haven't gotten done, we ensure that they get done right. Good job. Uh, Ann, you have your hand raised, and then I'll go to Laura and we'll move along. So, Ann? Okay. Um, I mostly skimmed through the plans, I have to admit. But, um, you know, one thing I was kind of looking for and I still don't really have is a, um, like a basic goal for downtown. Like, why, I know we, we want more people, but, um, and like Perky said, we want some of them to be tourists and some of them to be local residents and local businesses. But like, why do we want more people? I think it's, um, you know, big pictures. It's to build our entire community so that the whole city of Nacogdoches, everyone in every neighborhood feels that that's their downtown and they belong here and there's something there for them and they feel good about it. So the whole city is more connected. I think that's kind of a, 
a good goal for us for, for to protect us for everything that may happen in the future. Um, and I particularly want to get families downtown. I know that's hard to do. Um, what Brandy said about parking is so true and it comes up and it seems like such a, a mundane thing, but Miles was talking about uh, stretching out and doing some far reaching things. And, you know, we can also consider things like um, uh, bicycles to rent or even little scooters, although that might be opening a can of worms, but some way to make trans to make getting downtown around downtown mm -hmm. easier for people, especially if you're going up and down hills. Um, so those are just, we can do creative ideas, pedicabs during the festival, get a few people in here that'll do the, the bicycle taxis like that. Um, yeah. and I just also wanted to say to, to, um, reinforce what people were saying about how important it is for our downtown to connect our different cultures, uh, particularly the, um, African-American culture and reaching down to Shawnee street. I think the square mile downtown thing's a wonderful idea. I don't like limiting it to just the Brick Street area. And so I just wanted to throw that in there. Thank you. <laughs> Good stuff, uh, Laura. Oh, you're muted. You got to unmute. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, I had a comment about uh, through traffic. You know, on, there's some talk about, uh, you know, making pedestrian streets or in stages, pedestrian streets. Uh, walkways. Um, I, I mean, of course, that's a, a really nice feel when you're actually walking around. Uh, but at the same time, I do think there's a lot of value in maintaining some uh, through traffic just because it allows visibility. <laughs> and, uh, you know, when I'm driving through a town, Sometimes when you're driving through, it, you make a mental note, oh, this would be a nice place to come visit. And if, I know that's not something we'd ever consider in the near future, but even if it's planned to someday just have Main Street, like I guess in the 74 plan they're talking about potentially turning some of the streets into pedestrian only, um, I think it isolates a lot of historic treasures uh, that, you know, for example, if you have a visitor, sometimes the easiest way to show people your town is to just take a little driving tour. And if that was closed off, um, you know, you'd have to have, make the effort to, you know, walk. So all I'm saying is um, I'm not so sure I think um, totally closing off main uh, streets would be necessarily a, a good idea, but. Well, um, good, uh, good input. Um, um, I uh, appreciate y'all get an A for the, the homework, both homework assignments. You did a good job. And, you know, I don't remember what town it was. I, I went to town years and years and years ago down in Florida, CCA, side something. And, and uh, way before every community was a golf cart community, uh, they were kind of, you know, cutting edge there. And it was kind of interesting because they had certain sidewalks, roads and pathways painted one color and they had clear signage. And that was for golf carts. And they had another color, which were walking paths only. And then they had service roads, which were just asphalt. And they had signage that, you know, basically said, follow the yellow brick road kind of thing. So. I think that was a good, interesting input. Uh, we need to do this regularly. I hope you'll each make notes um, because it's easy to get out there to the next meeting and have forgotten what we talked about today. And we don't want to always have to repeat it, but we don't want to forget it. We want to come back to it. So when we get into that plan making part, uh, we can. So good job. I know there are others. Um, you can email folks or make your notes and pass them out next time we're physically together. But I appreciate y'all taking time to look at other towns and, and also looking at those plans. Um, next on the agenda, uh, I think is Jessica really to review a little bit previous downtown plans and the implementation of them. So uh, Jessica, I'll turn that part over to you for a minute. All right, thank you, Miles. We're gonna see if I can share my screen and present this on the first try. Um, you never know.
Look at there, it's working. All right. Can y'all see everything? Yes. <laughs> First try, I think I need to look at your shoulder. Um, so I quickly wanted to go through um, our plans that I gave everybody copies of in our last meeting. Um, we kind of went through what was covered, but I wanted to go through like what the specific recommendations were and then whether or not we accomplished those things, you know, what reasons we didn't or what reasons we did, kind of what the outcomes were. Um, and of course, there were some items listed in each plan, like we should incorporate SFA into our decision making process. So that's a recommendation overarching, but there wasn't a great way to, to quantify that. So I've kind of left it off our list, but you know, that's something they recommend in almost every plan that we take SFA into account or we look at traffic, things like that. But those weren't really hard and fast. There weren't really ways to, to look at that um, and actually grade it. Um, so I wanted to start with the 1974 downtown master plan. Um, and a lot of these are some minor recommendations. And then there was two or three really big project ideas, which of course was, you know, the closing um, Main Street, making it pedestrian. Um, so our first one was having um, downtown as a traffic destination. Um, part of that was brought up because this was before University Drive went all the way from the loop and nothing was connected yet. Um, and so part of that recommendation was hey, we should make sure that traffic flow still goes downtown and they don't surpass downtown. Um, and so, of course, downtown, we still, it's a main thoroughfare. We have, you know, it's a textile highway. Um, so that has been maintained. It is something worth thinking about when you think about how the downtown plan fits into a comp plan that we are about to have a very big interstate come through Nacogdoches and how do we keep some of that traffic coming through downtown versus everybody just staying on I-69. Um, so that kind of leads into signage, traffic, roads, things like that, but just something to think about. So um, we did implement the traffic staying the same. Um, I have a question mark on improving downtown parking because like Brandy said, it depends on who you ask. Um, some people say, yeah, downtown parking is great. And other people say it's way too far to walk. Um, we also did some changes based on the 1974 plan and added some more um, metered parking. Um, and that was there for many years. And then we kind of walked that back and have taken out the meters to make it a little more of a friendly parking area. Um, and so we've made some changes to downtown parking, but I don't know if everybody would say it's improved or if they just say it's different. Um, we've done that. One of the recommendations was also selected demolition of deteriorating buildings. Um, that is not something um, the city or individuals have really taken on. Um, we've kept the vast majority of our downtown buildings as long as we can preserve them. Um, we've got a pretty strong preservation ordinance. We haven't lost a building in many, many years. Um, so that is not something that was really followed through with. Um, we preserve the downtown street system as a historic feature. We're very proud of our red brick streets and have preserved those. Um, on improving signage, I put yes and no. Um, and, my, and some of this is subjective. I mean, if y'all, you know, think I'm wrong or think this wasn't done, please type in. It's not just me preaching it, everybody. Um, in my opinion, we've improved downtown signage in downtown, but not necessarily pointing people to downtown. Um, and then, like Randy said, you know, there's some confusing parking signs, and there's there are some signs pointing people to businesses that aren't open anymore downtown. So. It has improved, and then in other ways, it hasn't improved. Um, and also, the biggest recommendations for the 1974 plan, we didn't do the full vision. Um, so one of the options was to adapt narrow streets, like Church Street was the example, to pedestrian streets, convert Main Street into a shopping park from Pecan to Mound, and then convert Main Street to a full pedestrian from Pecan to Mound, including the fountains, wide sidewalks, things like that. So we we have done some things as far as you know, trying to make sidewalks better. We've tried to improve some ADA access where possible, but we haven't embraced and followed that overarching vision. Um, does anybody have any questions before I move on to the next plan? And you have your hand up, but I don't know if that's from the last from the last conversation or not. And Mario, go ahead. And you have your hand up, so I'll go ahead. Okay. Um, Jessica, I got a question. If you can go back to the first slide. Sure. Um, uh, selected demolition of deteriorating buildings. 
Um, yes. I'm, I'm wondering because that might be a thorny issue ongoing. Mm -hmm. And what does that look like with for consensus when a building is deemed um, obsolete, not functional for a 21st century location? Yes. So what we have now, um, so downtown, of course, like we all know, is a um, National Register and Historic District. <clears throat> and so there are protections in place for these historic buildings in the downtown region. Um, there's a lot of different ways to kind of look at it, really our buildings that are downtown should be preserved and not demolished if at all possible. Um, we even have protections in place. We have our demolition by neglect ordinance. So if Rissa owns a building downtown, she's letting it get to the point where it's going to demolish itself because the windows are broken out and uh, there's not a roof on it or the roof's leaking, then the city starts an action against, you know, letting her know that your buildings falling apart and these are historic buildings that need to be protected you need to start fixing them um and so we can escalate that as much as possible it's been very successful um as far as demolition by neglect um that's one of the things that got dolly steiner um finally restored um because that building it had an owner that it was a huge project and really couldn't accomplish it and we were telling them that you know you need to maintain your building and so decided to sell it to a great family that restored it um, and made it fit into that 20th century landscape. So I think we all our buildings fit, but I think some of them still need some love. Um, and we do have kind of those protections in place and those checks and balances so we can encourage people to restore these buildings and then use them. And I think it's important to note, and thank you to Brian for pointing this out, in 1974, we didn't have that demolition by neglect ordinance. Um, we had these buildings that were deteriorating and didn't really have a good recourse. I'm going to guess we probably didn't have historic restoration grants as well. Um, didn't have a lot of the modern finances that we have in place. Um, and so at that point, maybe, and I think okay, because I wasn't alive in 1974, um, the best option to the community back then may have been to demolish them because we didn't have a good way to attack them. Um, so I think that's, that's important to note that it was a very different financial landscape and a different ordinance landscape. Mara, did that answer your question? Um, yes, I was just, the big thing that stuck out to me is when I drive through our downtown, with the condition of some of the buildings, it doesn't seem very preserved or protected at this point. Absolutely, and, and it depends on what kind of support we have from administration as far as how much we can use them in militia mind neglect, and it's definitely an ordinance that can be used. It's just, it's always tricky because we don't want anybody to feel like, you know, we are going after a person because we don't like them. We are, you know, trying to maintain our historic buildings. And I think that's the, the overarching goal. And that's when we use that ordinance. So, so just as we go forward, um, just getting an objective viewpoint, um, perhaps we'll learn how we can do that without hurting anyone's feelings, right? In an objective way moving forward. Absolutely. Good, we'll, learn, we'll go ahead to our 1998 Heritage Development Plan. Um, I do want to remind everyone that this plan was not specifically for downtown. Um, this was kind of a Nacogdoches, you know, kind of looking at all of our heritage sites and all the options. Um, so I kind of went through just the recommendations for the downtown area. Um, there were things the city implemented from this plan, not in downtown. One of the things that was identified was all the temporary signs along Main Street and we needed better sign ordinances and things like that. And so the city did take that up and um, change some of those things. But this is more for just the historic downtown. Um, one thing was expanding the historic preservation ordinances. Um, we have done that. A lot of our districts have moved boundaries a little bit. Um, we've taken into consideration that, you know, some buildings are right on the cusp of a historic district um, and looking at do those actually fit in the period of significance. So we have looked at our ordinances and um, and up those a little bit. Um, one thing was an established a tax incentive program for business owners um, opening vacant buildings. Um, the city doesn't have that as a big tax incentive program. Um, I do wanna mention that part of our historic restoration grants, um, if you're in a historic area and you apply for a historic restoration grant to do work on the outside of your building, and that work is gonna take the building from being vacant to being occupiable, you do get extra points on your historic restoration grant for that. So we don't have a tax incentive program, but we do offer a few extra points for if you're gonna restore your building and take it from an unoccupied building to an occupied building. So we weigh that pretty heavily. 
Um, this one also recommended that the city should purchase property downtown in order to underwrite development. Um, we have not done that. Um, this one, my favorite, is purchase the train depot to be used as city facilities or retail. Um, we bought that, and now it's one of our historic sites, um, one of the ones that I've managed for years. Um, it's a great, you know, tourist destination. In my personal opinion, it's kind of one of the spots where downtown starts. Um, so we did buy that. We don't have it as retail it was one of the options, but we do have it as a historic site and a museum. Um, another big recommendation was the installation of a welcome booth and a mural at the corner of East Main and North Street. Um, this proposal kind of right where Johnson's furniture is. Um, that one's a yes and no. We did not put a welcome booth there, um, but we did put a mural on the exact spot they said to put a mural. Um, not necessarily the city doing it, but um, Johnson's furniture partnering with an artist and the Main Street program um, and getting that done. Um, so we do have a mural, we don't have a welcome booth, but we do have our visitors bureau, you know, one block over. Um, and then the two big um, proposals for the heritage development plan um, were making uh, Anita Creek and the depot district like shopping promenades and um, kind of these um, these mixed use developments. It's mainly pedestrian and a lot of retail. Um, and we did not do those. Um, I wasn't in Nacogdoches in 1998, so I don't know why we didn't do some of those things, um, but those two projects were not taken on um, by the city or by developers. Um, and one of the reasons I assume for Bonita Creek and some of the depot stuff is that a lot of these areas are in the floodplain. Um, I didn't know. I didn't really think about it until a few years ago when the creek flooded and it got very, very close to the railroad depot museum. Um, I didn't even think about this area being in the floodplain, but it definitely is. Uh, and so it's a little harder to do bigger development down there just because there's only certain things you can do in a floodplain. Um, and so that may be one of the reasons that that wasn't pursued. Does anybody have any questions about those before I move on? No? Okay. Um, so our 2017 Main Street Streetscape Plan. Um, as a reminder, this is one that's put together by uh, the Texas Historic Commission's Main Street um, Division. They come to Main Street Cities if you request them, and they kind of give you some recommendations. The first couple paragraphs of this really talk about here are some recommendations, but these should be a part of a bigger master planning process. Um, so they kind of said, these are recommendations, your Main Street program likes them. We didn't do public input, we didn't do anything like that, and so this should be part of a bigger planning process. Um, excuse me. One of the recommendations was to repair, level, and repave damaged sidewalks and services. Again, I put yes and no because we do repair sidewalks um, and surfaces when we can, um, but there's still a lot that needs to be done and there's constantly issues as far as ADA access and, you know, cracks in sidewalks and things like that. So we've done it, but there's still a lot more that needs to be done. Um, adding landscaping to blend height differences along sidewalks. Um, this one and the one after it, as far as resolved corners um, without ADA access, kind of go hand in hand. We've added a lot of landscaping over the years. We have our beautiful planter boxes and hanging baskets and, you know, downtown really is beautiful landscape wise. But this um, recommendation was, if you picture in front of Dolly's time, uh, they recommended from that very, very tall curb to do um, essentially planters and gardens right there to force people to go to the ADA access curbs and not just pop off the curb. Um, and so we've added landscaping, but not landscaping exactly where they told us to. Um, and then we have not resolved the corners without ADA access. Um, they also told us to consider creating shared streets to give back to people, which is a pretty common theme if you think about it throughout all these plans. Um, I think we talk about it from 1974 all the way to 2017. Uh, so they talk about giving these streets back, creating pedestrian areas. Um, so that's recommended in here as well. Um, insert several seating types to increase pedestrian comfort. Um, we've all we've had benches downtown for a very long time. Um, this plan talks more about picnic tables, you know, different alternative seating that's kind of artsy benches and things like that. So we've stayed with our traditional benches and have added more of those over the years, but haven't added anything additional or different. Um, another one was adding experiences into space to grab attention of pedestrians. Um, again, I put yes and no. We've added murals, which are beautiful and eye-catching, and they kind of fill those vacant windows. 
And we've also added temporary photo ops that you'll see kind of the doors that our visitors bureau did downtown. Um, we use those a lot during events, uh, but not really anything that was recommended in the plan, which was things like water features, uh, big stand up chimes, things that people can really interact with. So we've done things that have beautified downtown, but not a lot of interactive. Um, and then con consider converting existing hardscape into greenscape. This one, they are specifically talking about the east side of the downtown square, so the east side of the CBD, uh, about converting a lot of that hardscape into greenscape. So you could put picnic tables and have food trucks and, you know, do lawn games outside and things like that. So um, we have not done that one either. Um, but so these isn't, is it, none of these are my opinions on what we should do, shouldn't do, what's the most successful. This is just kind of where we are in relation to what these recommendations were on these plans all these years. So do y'all have any questions about this one or any thoughts or anything like that? I do think it's important to note that we got this in 2017. And if I remember correctly, I think it was, it was fairly late in 2017. Um, so we essentially had 2018 and 2019 to get it done. The last two years have been kind of a, a placeholder treading water in local government. Um, and so I think a lot of these recommendations, it's not that the city or anybody didn't want to get them done. I think it was just a matter of we couldn't get them done. Um, and so think about think about these in that context. Um, these to me all seem really still applicable. Absolutely. I think the 2017 ones are still very doable. I think this would probably match a lot of community desires not to speak for the community. Um, and some of them are are easier ones to do because they're not as large scale. They, you know, budgetary, they'd be a little bit easier to do. Um, and I think a lot of people still want these things. We just have been kind of holding and everybody's getting through COVID and you know, things like that. So I think these are things that we could do and could still definitely be incorporated into another plan if that's what everybody desires. Brady, it looks like you have your hand up. I do. I thought one of the really cool things about this plan specifically was that it talked about doing um, like temporary um, park spaces to see if it worked, if the community liked it. And I really loved that idea. Um, because sometimes we might think it's a good idea to put something somewhere and, the, and then we go to all the work to do it and then it really wasn't the best place for it. Um, so I thought that was a really cool idea that they suggested several times in that plan specifically. Yeah, that tactical urbanism yes. uh, is the big thing. It's testing out, you know, if you think this street should just be one way and if it's one way, we can use the parking spaces for a parklet. It's, it's a big thing, especially in the Main Street community as well. It's like, if you think that's going to work, let's put out some traffic cones and during an event or during a, you know, a Friday or Saturday, let's test it out and see if it works. Yeah. Um, which I always think is smart because I'm kind of a frugal person to begin with. So I'm like, I'm going to make sure it works for us and my money somewhere. Um, so yeah, they definitely talk about that and it is big in the Main Street world in those circles is that tactical urbanism and kind of try before we buy type thing. Yeah. And I think it really would probably... Um, especially things that we think will really be good, but it will really help community buy in when they see we put something temporary down and they're like, oh, this is really cool. And then, and then we do it. So. Absolutely. Anybody else have any thoughts or questions about any of these? All right, I'll let you take it back over then. All right, thanks, Jessica. And I assume that you'll make those slides available to us so that we can spend some time going back and, and reviewing those. Um, yes, I'll send the slides and then also um, the map that um, John asked about earlier, um, the historic map. We'll send all of these things out to y'all after the meeting. Perfect. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about on the agenda, um, you received some documents. Um, from Jessica, and it was kind of frequently asked questions about both the comprehensive plan and about a downtown master plan. And we're gonna mostly focus right now on the downtown master plan and discuss that a little bit. And before we do that, um, you know, if you if you take uh, Jay and Amelia, they, they got two hats on. They are uh, committee members, just like the rest of us. They're equal, their say is no more, no less than ours, et cetera. 
um, then they have other jobs and roles where they are elected city officials and they will vote and, and have some authority and, and they are in that sense political. But I want to remind us um, that we're not. I mean, I've been asked by a community member, uh, you know, that I, I should vote uh, not to hire a consultant. Well, I, we don't have votes, y'all. That's not who we are. And in fact, I actually went to uh, Jessica and Mario when we started this and I said, um, hey, that's y'all's deal. I mean, if it's a resource we select and, and we have, I'll take the help. But if not, um, the downtown master plan, you know, it it's a square mile to capture John's vision. Um, and I think we can do some good here. It would be much harder if we were on the comprehensive plan and we were looking at where houses need to be built and infrastructure and other treatment plants and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But um, I just want to remind us that you're going to be uh, probably pegged and tried to put in a box every now and then kind of politically. We're not political, y'all. We're here as people that have a a touch point to downtown. That's how we got on these committees. We were either selected or appointed because of roles we have or where we live or the businesses that we operate. Um, and, and we have a love for downtown and we can be successful. Um, taking a look at that 1974 plan, getting the good parts from it and building to it. And, um, you know, uh, the, the, the political action will accept or not accept some of the recommendations. And, and trust me, we're not going to give them a plan that 100% of it gets done. That's just not realistic. Um, but I want to encourage you um, when you get cornered at the grocery store, church, or at the coffee shop, uh, make sure you put people in check. We take all input, but at the end of the day, we're people that just really love the, uh, the opportunity to say, how can we improve downtown? And um, that's that's our function. And we can do that no matter how uh, when, when Jay and Amelia put other hats on, how they vote doesn't affect our success of what we can come up with and what we can recommend. And let me tell you, if we if money is a problem or something and we can't do some of our recommendations now, you know, uh, 10 years from now or 20 years from now, there'll probably be another group of people just like us looking at the work we produced and there'll be good parts they still want to go forward with. So I really encourage you to not wrap around the axle and get bogged down in any of the political part of this, but instead let's focus on the task this particular committee was given, which is what do we do for downtown and what do we do for downtown that might make a real difference for our community down the road. Um, when you get cornered, these questions, uh, that uh, were sent out are the kind of things you're going to be cornered about. And um, even though we don't have a dog in the hunt necessarily, we don't have the authority, we don't vote, et cetera, that doesn't excuse us from being educated and equipped and, and ready to give some responses. And so if, if you got those and had a chance to read through them, I'm, I'm just as in, interested in the comprehensive plan, but we're going to try to stay timely. So we're going to focus, I think, for a little while here on the downtown master plan, frequently asked questions and answers. And so what I'd like to do to start with, and if we, we get some input, great. And if not, Jessica will chime in, I'm sure, or, or Larissa. But let's, let's talk about those questions that Jessica provided us and the... Um, um, information she gave us as responses to those questions. Does anybody on the committee want to raise their hand and say, I'm bothered with that response, or uh, here's a question that's not on there that I've already been asked, or uh, let's have a little dialogue about how do we, how do we get uh, through the political part of it and, and be able to focus on what we're really trying to do. So questions, anybody got one? Jessica, you might tell them how these questions were developed and, you know, kind of where you got some of that information to get us started. Sure. So um, the questions we put together are the ones that our city staff get asked a lot um, as far as, you know, why do we need a plan? How much does it cost? Who's involved? <laughs> why did you pick a certain uh, firm over another one? Um, and so these are the questions that we hear from people at the grocery store. Um, emails, phone calls, things like that. And so what 
our city staff did was we kind of compiled this whole list of questions that we hear the most often um, and then had other city staff and partners do answers to these um, and help us answer them in a way that everybody could understand. Um, all the city staff is also aware that, you know, we deal with these plans on a daily basis in this whole planning process. Um, so we've tried to boil this down into something that everybody can understand, even if they haven't been involved from day one. Um, and our goal is to have these answers, make sure that everybody in our committees understand, you know, the process, how we got here, uh, the answers we can come up with, and, you know, if we need to tweak them, we can. Um, and then we will start putting a lot of this information out on our social media channels, you know, sending things in the Daily Sentinel, um, making sure that everybody has a chance to know the background of this process and know kind of where we're going. Um, because we know people are, are busy, they have very busy lives. You know, there's a million things going on and a million things you can focus on right now. Um, but we wanna make sure we give everybody the opportunity to get caught up to where we are, to understand the process and to know where we're going. So um, the goal was to have y'all review these before we start putting them out. So we don't want our steering committees to ever be, you know, taken aback and not know kind of what's coming out. We wanted to make sure y'all reviewed this and understood all these things. And so then we can make sure the public understands them as well. Um, and if there's an answer to one of these that we wrote it out and you're still going, I don't know what you're trying to tell me, you know, please tell us to make sure that we have, we've written this right and we're not skipping steps essentially. I, I did have a couple of chat things pop up. Can you resend them, et cetera? They are attached to the invitation to this meeting. So the link, the, the email from Jessica that you click the link to join this meeting, those questions are attached there. Um, and look at there, the magic of sharing right the screen. What a deal. <laughs> Technology. Uh, Jessica. I know one of the, the, you know, the hottest, you know, political topics that I get cornered on is the consultant and, you know, when we're going to do this, when we're going to do that. Remind everybody real quick when that comes up at city council and where that decision process is, please. Um, so the contract with the proposed firm, which is DTJ, um, will come up at our January 18th city council meeting. Um, city council, we were asking them for um, a decision whether or not to approve the contract with DTJ. Um, and so that will be heard on the 18th. Yeah. One, one thing I would add to this, I, I know this is going to come up now. Uh, we, we discussed this in one of our last meetings. We're not in a rush here. Um, we're going to take several months to methodically. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, we're starting out kind of vague. And as we work together as a committee and, We've already had some people say, I'm going to drop off, and that's fine. At the end, there's going to be a group of us that ride this horse across the finish line, and it may take us six months or eight months or nine months. Um, but during that process, at some point in time, we will be charged as committee members of, of going out into the community to our different constituents and friends and, and civic groups and coffee shops and things of that sort, and, and sharing the kind of ideas that we're talking about and asking the community for input. And it, it will be all of our responsibility to run these ideas by people. And, and probably what will happen when we're doing that is somebody out there is going to have an even better idea than we've already had. And they're going to give us other input. And we're going to go back and forth with that with a while. And, and in that process, you know, <coughs> it's, it's, uh, you know, un unlike you go to a city commission meeting and they're kind of Robert's rules of orders and there's there's, you know, a, 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 there's a city attorney there. Well, we can't answer that or we can't do this or and there's there's rules and regulations on who can talk about what, when. That's not going to be the world we're in. We're going to be in kind of an open, free uh, forum set of discussions. And these questions will come up to you. Uh, and even though you. Uh, it's not your responsibility. You need to equip yourself with these answers. And even if you have to answer that, that's not in our assignment, but here's what I can tell you uh, has been provided to us as a resource from the city. Um, and so these are questions that we'll probably add to this list. Uh, some of these answers will probably change. It's probably going to, um, you know, 
every meeting we have from now on, we'll probably discuss them a little bit. Which ones are you getting asked the most and how's the answer working and what are you missing? Uh, what are people most upset about, et cetera? And I don't, I think we have that responsibility. We're going to be with the citizens of our community in our spots that we're comfortable with, where people will be maybe more honest with us than they are in a public, you know, real big forum type thing. But, um, at the same time, I just want to remind you, don't get wrapped around the axle there too long and come back to the ideas of what's going to make our downtown better and what needs to be in our plan when we make those recommendations. Um, anybody else got questions or thoughts or input there? Jessica, what do you need? Mario's got his hands up. Go ahead, Mario. Um, I just wanted to say for the benefit of the, of the committee here, if you think about it, if this was if this one was written in 1974, that's almost three generations of Texans, of Nacogdoches residents that have never heard of a com comprehensive plan. So that might help us know, wow, you know, we've got three generations back that have not heard of a comprehensive plan or have been through one. That may be some of the murkiness and some of the educating that we can do. Good point. Others? And Miles, one thing I'll add from the staff perspective, if anybody on our committees, you know, if if there's a question that we're missing on here, you know, if if you go to church every Sunday and someone asks you a certain question and we didn't cover it, um, please reach out to any of our staff members that we've kind of identified through y'all uh, or to y'all. Um, because we're happy to help with an answer to tell you how we got to this point. You know, if it's something that maybe I don't know, I can reach out to Larissa or Brian or Mario or um, anybody involved and we can find an answer for that. Because, you know, the whole beauty of having the steering committee is everyone runs in different circles in this town. Uh, so Miles may be hearing something totally different than Laura and <laughs> different from our staff members. Um, so if y'all have questions that you hear all the time that we haven't covered, please let us know. Um, also, if you, I would caution everybody, if you hear a rumor out there about, oh, here's why we're doing this and it doesn't sound right to you, like the answer that they're giving doesn't sound right, you know, you can verify with us and ask staff these questions before anything gets shared or rumor mills go. So we're, our staff especially is happy to be a resource um, to help answer questions. Or if you don't understand the process and how we got here, because some of our steering committee members weren't involved early on, you know, if you don't know how we got here, so in more detail, um, you know, want to sit down with us, we're happy to do that as well. Well, did anybody learn anything today? Get your brain going, make you start thinking. I mean, we're a long way from the finish line, but uh, I love, um, hearing some of the ideas that were in the old plan that might be really great foundations for moving forward. I love some of the things that we heard from the other cities. Um, I, I, you had a homework assignment to visit a town and, and study the plans and your new homework assignment is visit other towns and study the plans. Uh, because I think that's something that we're going to constantly have to be going back to so that we, um, you know, don't make some of the same mistakes and, and, and uh, we build from there. Um, Anne's got her hand raised from Australia and I'm dang sure going to call on her since she's calling in from Australia. Okay. It's so crazy. No, I know our, one of our assignments also was to talk to neighbors and friends and people and just see what they're thinking. And one thing I've heard in a few conversations, people will be going, oh, they have, people have stories about so-and-so who wanted to buy this building and wanted to start this business and they would let <laughs> them or they made it harder. The city did this or so did that. There's like a lot of stories like that. Like uh, I think there's an impression that there's a, an old guard of Nacogdoches that's like preventing any progress from happening. I mean, I, I'd like to kind of maybe at some point we could get some history of some of the buildings you know, and the businesses, why they failed, who owned them, what happened, just to get a clear eye. Because I don't know what to say when people tell me that. I go, that's terrible. I wonder why they did that to you. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone else has had that experience or had those conversations, but I have. So just something to, you know, 
maybe get educated on a little more as well. I, I can tell you, Ann, I've, I've worked for the city for 20 years and I've heard that over and over and over again. And I've probably in those 20 years read more of the city council minutes and been in more of the executive sessions than just about anybody that's with the city right now. And I've never once, I've seen some ugly things in the history. I'm not gonna say we're a perfect town, but in the last, 50 years, I've never seen an instance of the city purposefully blocking a business. Um, I don't even know how that would happen today. You know, back in the 40s, there might have been some backdoor mechanism for it to happen. I don't think that's true, but I can't say that because I wasn't here. As of today, there is no way for the city to block a business. If the place they want to go is zoned appropriately, they get all of their appropriate building permits and they follow, which are all standard normal practices. You are welcome to open your donut shop. You are welcome to open Target. <laughs> you are welcome to open your, your fantastic industrial business. So, so that may be your answer back is the city can't stop businesses from coming as long as those businesses follow zoning and, and building safety codes. John, I bet in 1974, you did not have anyone call in to one of y'all's committee meetings from Australia. I'm just pointing that out. So, um, <laughs> times have changed. Yeah. Not that I can remember. Anyway. All right. Thank you, Doug. That was a big help. Thank you. All right. Well, let me tell you a little bit about the next meeting. Um, we, um, and we wanted to do this, hopefully we'll be live at the next meeting, but, um, you know, we did uh, tell you, uh, and Larissa, I think, and Jessica both have been working on it. We're going to spend some time, um, you know, looking at um, other towns, downtowns, uh, currently and historically. What did that downtown look like, you know, 10, 15 years ago? What does it look like now? And those won't all be success stories. Some of those will, will be examples of, of towns that, you know, didn't do what we're doing. They didn't get community involvement and citizens that were willing to give their couple of hours up every month to try to figure out how to move the city forward and and that'll continue to give us perspective and i know some of you are uh like me uh are kind of action oriented i, I want to make a plan and i want to make some recommendations and i want to do it right now um you, you got to think um you know uh, this takes time and we're not going to rush it if you pull a cake out of the oven too soon it can be nasty uh, and we're going to take our time and make sure we really look at other towns and we look at these plans and we learn them and we listen to our community and our citizens. And then eventually we're going to get to that point where these meetings are going to more be about, let's talk about recommendations in this category. Let's talk about recommendations in that category. Um, and so it's coming. Uh, it's okay to be impatient but don't become frustrated. I mean, we, we've already had a couple of committee members and I'm just gonna tell you, I wanna share this with you so that we can help um, answer these, this question. Um, we've had some commi committee members that said, you know what, I don't wanna participate. I think the, the, the city already knows what they wanna do down there and they're just using this you know, kind of committee process to rubber stamp it. I'm telling you, this is our ball to carry. Um, and, um, you know, we we deliver a set of recommendations. The city then does the commissioners get to choose which of those recommendations, um, you know, come first, second and third. What can we afford? Which ones meet, meet up with the comprehensive plan? And they're going to, you know, poor Jay and Amelia, by the time we get through beating this dead horse to death, they got to go over there and put their other hats on and then make those decisions. Um, but um, we we have a blank canvas right now, y'all. Um, and we're very blessed to have some artists before us, many little plans to look at, and there's good nuggets in every one of those. And many communities across this state and country that have done a better job than we have, and some that have done a worse job that we have. And if we can just take all of that and paint a picture, I'm pretty confident that at the end, we'll get 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 percent of our plan to actually happen and if we do that um i think you're going to see your grandkids you know enjoying a pocket park or uh, 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 parking in a 
two story, five story downtown parking garage or or, you know, whatever it comes out to be. I think we're going to get to experience in that for a couple of generations. So just know it's a marathon. Don't get your pace going too fast. It's going to take us a while to get there. But I think at the end, you're going to um, get to see um, a group of citizens like us that succeed in making some great recommendations to the city council. And I think you'll see the city council act on many of those. Um, there'll be limiting factors, uh, but I think when we're done, we won't say, well, that was a waste of my time. I think instead when we're done, we'll say, check this out, man. I, I, I had a little tiny piece in that right there. So, uh, I appreciate y'all. I know that uh, our commissioners do. I know the city staff does. Um, sometimes we forget how much work they have to do way before we have one of these meetings, um, even the technology and them punting here at the end and having to go virtual. That doesn't just happen overnight. And uh, actually, this meeting went very smoothly considering what happened. Uh, you know, poor Greg couldn't get his computer to work and had to call in on the phone and we got Ann from Australia. That's about as good as it gets right there. And so um, I appreciate y'all. Jessica, uh, I don't have my calendar in front of me. The next meeting date. So our next meeting date for this group is February 9th at 3.30. Um, I will email everybody with the details because we're hoping to do that presentation and then kind of pair this with an actual walking tour of downtown. Because um, Experiencing downtown is very different if you're just driving through it every day to get to work versus if you're walking it, you know, shopping, that type of thing. Um, so we're hoping to, to pair those same two things together depending on the weather. Um, so when we get a little closer, I'll email that out to everybody. And another date to put on your calendar, and this will be emailed out as well, is January 18th at 5.30 p.m. is when City Council will vote um, on the contract with DTJ, which is the proposed um, master planning company. Um, and of course, everybody's invited to to tune into that virtually or to attend those meetings as well. So I will send out that agenda to y'all and then more details on our February 9th meeting when we get a little closer. Maybe we can make that walking tour like a scavenger hunt, Jessica, with some clues and there'd be a bottle of wine hidden over here. Hey, there you go. <laughs> some brie and cheese over here and then yeah, some desserts down there. It'd be great. So, all right. Yeah, anybody else great. got anything else before we all dismiss? I think Ann has a hand up. Ann, you're muted. I, I, okay, I, I wanted to um, say one thing. There's an organization called Strong Towns, and they are having what they call their uh, uh, locomotive tour. They're having eight sessions in the months of February and March, kind of uh, designed for towns. Some of the titles, like one was uh, Four Quick Zoning Reforms for a Strong Town. Uh, one was Let's Fix Danger Street in 24 Hours or Less. Um, how to make progress when political divisions dominate. So there's some really good ones. And I just, I'll, I'll send the information out in the email in case anybody else besides me wants to, to join these courses and, you know, take advantage of this uh, information. So, so I'll let y'all know that. <laughs> All right. Thank y'all. We're going to get this done. Just right. let's keep going. And one day we're going to look up and be really proud. Appreciate y'all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.